three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Texas Private School Podcast. As always, I am one half of your host and crew, Wes Tolleson, joining you from the heart of Dallas, Texas. Walker Lott, my fantastic co-host, joins you from College Station, Texas, home of the 1-0 Fighting Texas Aggies. We are so, so, so back. Walker, a lot of interesting things in private school ball, a lot of interesting things in collegiate football. We'll only talk about one of those, but how are you doing? What are your thoughts on the landscape of college football or high school football? Sorry. Uh, it's, I mean, great week. Uh, uh, College football, a lot of crazy games, a lot of, uh, you know, upset of Colorado and all of that. And then you have an upset with EHS in private school. And uh, the, the, ki- the king of private school for the past couple of years, finally gets defeated and uh it's that's a huge huge win we'll talk about it more later but like i think that set the tone for a crazy week of Texas high school football absolutely it's going to be incredibly interesting to look forward at the next week but first we've got to recap last week and even before that guys when this comes out it will be less than a week until our merch shop closes it's open for two weeks it'll be open for six days when you're seeing this We, we went on our whole spiel uh, last week about what the merch means to us, what it means. And yet again, just it's the same thing. It would mean a ton to us if you supported us by by purchasing it. And also, I've, I've already seen a couple people. We gave out uh, the first drop of this to a lot of the quarterbacks at our quarterback retreat. And I've seen some of them come up wearing um, our, our apparel and it's the coolest feeling in the world. Um, we've gotten great feedback from it. It's incredibly comfortable. High Point Science and Apparel, who we'll talk about later, does a fantastic job. Like you've seen, you've seen the shirts. We've got the hats right here. I guarantee you, they're the most comfortable shirts and hoodies you will ever wear. Uh, Walker Lot, um, it's something we're incredibly proud of. And just what are your what are your thoughts on the on the apparel? Oh yeah, it's been amazing. You know, I've had people come up and they love it. Like just the. Like the general, just my friends of mine, they're like, oh, it's actually really sick. And uh, it's awesome, man. It's a really good time. Please reach out and uh, click the link in our website. Uh, our, our pin tweet is also uh, the link to the web store. Uh, so please check it out. You know, you have one more week. I think it ends September 13th, I believe, on the top of my head at 11.59. So please go check it out. It's awesome. It's a great way to support us and give so we can give back to the community as well because – all the money we'll make is so we can go and, you know, pay for gas and mileage and all of this. And so stuff like that is where we can put money back into this and what we love to do. So uh, special thanks to everyone who's already bought stuff because we have we have a couple people and special thanks to everyone who will be, you know, buy it by the end of this, whatever, two weeks. So thank you all. Absolutely. That is txpsmedia.com or our link tree, the link in the description, our pinned tweets. It's very easy to find. But if you need help, txpsmedia.com, you will see a link. So go grab it. A week left and then it is gone forever. So that being said, Walker Lot, let us let us get into our pick records. We forgot to do this last week. Um, I'd prefer not to do it this week. It, it wasn't that bad, but I got hammered uh, in a couple spots. Walker, last week you went 14 and 5. I went 12 and 7. Overall, you have a two game lead on me. You are 29 and 9 on the young season. I am 27 and 11. So, Walker Lot, um, I don't think it's been quite as volatile as last year was because I think we right. had like maybe two or three negative weeks early um but what are your thoughts on on you know the the first few weeks are very tumultuous what are your thoughts on the pick records and how they reflect that yeah i was i i when I was doing the pick records you know i picked the wrong covenant you picked tide park you picked second baptist you picked john cooper those are the games we had uh yeah i mean i think it was pretty close i think some of those games you know the covenant christian battle the covenant battle was like a three-point difference so stuff like that but yeah not much variety and then of course the one variety is the big one that we'll talk about shortly but um yeah 
a crazy couple of weeks, but not as crazy definitely as last year. Yeah, yeah, last year was insane. I um I'm blessed not to have gone negative. That's always I try to shoot for a little bit above that. And 12 and 7 isn't exactly um I like to have usually twice as many wins at least as I do losses. Um 12 and 7 is not that. Uh, I'll gain the lead back and I will I will surely retain the trophy that I secured last year. Um not going to lie, I, I moved. I'm not entirely sure where that trophy ended up. I'm sure it's here somewhere, but I, I might have to I might have to go and get another trophy for the new year. We'll see. That that's something that's a that's a bridge we'll cross when we come to it. But that is the pick records. Um I am anticipating at least uh, a 16 and 3 record this week. We'll get really ambitious. But that being said, we move into the analysis of the Texas Private School Media Football Scoreboard as put together every week. We have, what is this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. We have 20 games, I think, one, two, three, four, five. We have, we have 24 games mm. um, every week that we recap. And also, for everyone that's DMing us and uh, messaging us saying, you forgot a game, you forgot a game, we only put 24 scores on there. Uh, a lot of the times... We're we're pulling scores as fast as we can, but there's only 24 spots. Just because we see it doesn't mean we didn't forget you. You will be on the scoreboard at some point. And I promise. Also added to that, just put your score under underneath, and that helps us too. So it helps because I we've realized like coaches and other players will look at the scoreboard on the weekends and like see how other people compared. So if you just put the score of your team underneath, like it helps everyone and you know keeps the point across. So uh yeah, put your scores underneath if you haven't yet. So. Absolutely. So we will talk about the five games on the left hand side of the quadrant in our recap. Uh, Walker, I will hand it to you first. There is mm. there's a lot of interesting results. Is there anything that you're looking at here? We talked a about a lot of these on the space. Is there anything that you're looking at here that you're like, this is this is worth talking about for a couple seconds? Uh, the four is all since TC Addison. TC Addison kind of, you know, kept it close for a bit then all since pulled away, I think, in the second half, uh, you know, Kelvin Ryan and company looked really, really good. And, you know, going into week two or week three, three and L or two and L I am going crazy. Um, but a uh, big win for them. All saints over the division one school uh, moving into right next to it. ESD at Liberty. Yeah. Argyle Liberty shuts out ESD and that's a big, big win for Liberty. I think that's a very impressive win. Um, it's not easy to shut out ESD at all. And so that offense is usually always clicking really well. So shout out to Liberty, man. That's a big win. Uh, Fort Worth Christian starts off strong. You know, they played a uh, public school the first week and now play Bishop Don and smack Bishop Don and Luke Dodd and company look like maybe it's not as much of a drop off as we thought. Um, and I'll talk about this one. Grapevine Faith versus Woodland Christian. Uh, the Clayton Sebecki show. Um, I'm going to look at that because that was impressive. Um, by, um, we we've we've said it the whole time. Like if Clayton Sebecki keeps balling out, then he will, you know, then they have a chance. Uh 368 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, you know, on receipt or passing the ball, then 180 yards and five touchdowns rushing the ball. Um, and also a pick six for hundred yards. I mean, that is what you want in your star player. The division one talent is a division one talent for a reason. Uh, and he can keep these guys in games. And I heard uh, we they had a couple injuries in the second half for TWCA, like cramps and stuff. So uh, that helped a lot of their star players not be able to play. Um, that's, you know, that's football. And, uh, you, you know, when you have guys not playing and a guy like that on the other side that can just, you know, dominate the game easily, um, that's that's a recipe for disaster for TWCA. But I think they'll bounce back and they'll be fine. Uh, but Grave on Faith, big win for them uh, with a team that we thought not much about. And there was thoughts of, OK, maybe they're going to be a slouch in that district and maybe not as good as last year in the past couple of years. Uh, Clayton Sebecki and company are kind of saying ha ha uh, to all of y'all. So big win for Grave on Faith. Yeah, absolutely. Um, makes me a little more nervous for District 2. I thought Grace had a pretty defined path to take that. And uh, Grapevine Faith doing that to a team that we thought was pretty daggum good in the Woodlands Christian. Now, I know it seems like Kai Parker, standout receiver. Um, yeah. it, from what I'm from what I'm gathering, it seems like he got hurt at some point. I'm assuming he was out for part, if not most of that game. I don't know how long he's going to be out going forward, but regardless, still with fantastic athletes on that Woodlands Christian squad, great by faith, the great win, uh, something I'll hit on here. Um, where was it? I just lost it. 
Actually, no, you already talked about that. So, yeah, it's – oh, sorry, DC versus Wichita Christian. Um, We said – or I said I picked DC to cover like a 22-point spread against Wichita Christian. Obviously, that didn't happen. I was questioning how – how teams or how a team from Louisiana in that district was going to stack up against Dallas Christian. And obviously they did quite well. Um, I had some analysis from the game that I talked about. Apparently DC just wasn't quite physical enough, which is very rare that you hear from a Dallas Christian team, but I guess Wichita Christian really had it. Apparently there was a holding call that took back a game winning touchdown. Anyways, um, I'll get more into this, into the, into the spreads, but um, I don't really this doesn't sway me one way or the other on DC. Um, Wichita yeah. Christian is obviously a great team. Um, kind of the same thing. They're going to play Tolar, uh, a two A powerhouse this week. Whatever they do against Tolar isn't going to really yeah. phase me either way. DC is going to to bushwhack every single team in D three, and uh, they're just they stack their non conference slate, and they're going to be better teams for it, win or loss. So uh, can, that can was. We- can we talk about a couple others just quickly? Absolutely. Uh, First Baptist dominates McKinney Christian with 72 points. Uh, we'll talk about them a little bit more later, but uh, putting up 70 in this game, and I want to say like, what, like 60 in the other game? Um, big first two weeks of that offense that is just clicking on all cylinders right now. Mercy Culture, the D4 team gets another win. St. Thomas starts 2-0, and and I want to shout out uh, Dante Lewis a little bit. He is putting up video game-type numbers right now, 887 total yards in two games. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal week. Uh, Larry Benton had another great game. I think that offense is clicking right now. Leberton is led by Baylor commit Brock Jackson, I believe. Um, so that's a good public school out there. On Leberton, so good win for St. Thomas starting off 2-0. and uh, Oh, yeah, Southwest Christian. It's not on the board, but Southwest Christian beat Grace Prep coming back revenge season. Uh, Jalen Tolton beat us last year, and he is now gone, and now we win, so that is helpful. Uh, but, um, yeah, shout out to my Eagles over there. They get the dub over there and go into Oak Ridge, do the same thing this week. Proud of y'all. Um, besides that, Lake Country loses to John Paul in a close one by a field goal. Um, Cypress Christian, I believe beats John Cooper for the second time in two years or no, I don't know how that went last week. I want to say Cypress won it last year, but I could definitely be wrong. Um, but Cypress Christian gets the win their first win of the season with John Kelly on that offense. Uh, besides that, I think everything kind of makes sense. Um, a couple good ones. Um, Liberty or yeah. Legacy Christian beats Oak Ridge 55 to six in the star. Uh, besides that good week. Race community beats Will's point 62 to seven. That is the game I will leave off with, but, but yeah, we'll, we'll hear more about grace um, a little bit later in a game. I'm very, very, very excited to preview, but that being said, that has been the scoreboard recap presented by TXPS media. So moving forward, we are going to recap the five games we previewed last week um, of which I think I got three of them wrong. I did get three of them wrong. Awesome. I almost got four uh, regents uh, scared or yeah. Regents of Midland scared me a little bit. But going into the first one, the game that I was actually at, Episcopal at Parish, and you know Carson Gordon and Braylon Thompson shine for Episcopal as the Knights claim the Texas private school throne. Senior UNLV commit Carson Gordon has 370 yards of total offense as he grabs two scores on the ground and one of the more clutch performances I've ever seen from an individual player. I mean, any time that they needed something done, Carson Gordon stepped up and did it. I mean, he's just... He's he's ridiculously dynamic. Junior running back Brandon Thomas looked electric running the football, and receivers Garen Sampson and Logan Barty rounded out a really talented EHS offense. Defensively, Braylon Thompson was everywhere, coming up with an interception and several pass deflections, and Episcopal came up with several red zone stops that really defined the game. You know, for Parrish... Hutch Crow is absolutely unstoppable despite the loss with a hunt with 11 receptions for 225 yards, just an absolutely ridiculous stat line. Harvard commit Maddox Reed had 100 yards on the ground while Purdue commit Sawyer Anderson threw for 334 yards, although he got picked off three times. And that really was the story in the game. Parrish was relatively unable to capitalize on red zone opportunities. And at the end of the day, I mean, you can't. You can't waste that opportunity, though. You can't waste that many opportunities against a team like EHS. They're going to make you pay for it. So, Walker, EHS um, goes out and beats the perennial power, the four time defending D1 state champions in Parrish. Uh, what are your thoughts on what this means for the private school landscape? Um, I think it's it's an interesting thing because I think maybe EHS is finally clicking um, from last year. You know, sometimes they just maybe didn't look as good as they, they should have. 
but they have the same amount, basically talent. But BJ, I think BJ Thomas brings a different edge to the running back position from last year. Um, but that's a big win for EHS, man. I mean, they're the king, you know, they slayed the king. Um, and I think it's kind of like a like an Alabama type of thing, right? With Parrish, like one of the reasons you can beat Alabama in you know real life is you make them turn the ball over and you make them uncomfortable in a lot of things. Um, and having a defense that can do it. Um, and you know, Parrish is no exception. I feel like it's the same thing where if you make them throw the ball a lot and you make them, you know, have a lot of risky throws and have the and them turn the ball over and any football game, of course, turnovers, you know, if you can cause turnovers, you probably will win the game. And this is no exception. Three turnovers, three picks uh, by Sawyer Anderson is huge. Um, and it kind of shows that EHS might have the best defensive back in the state. Um, big, big win for them. But, uh, I think this is this is not I think if any of their non district games right for Parish, this was the one they probably thought they could easily win. Like this was the one they probably were circling that this should be the win. Um and they don't. And now they have to play Sock, China Springs, and Austin LBJ. I think Austin LBJ is this week. Um mm-hmm. there is a real true possibility that Parish Episcopal starts 0 and five to start the year. Um and I don't I think they could maybe get one over LBJ this week. I don't know how good they are. They're the lowest. I think they're the lowest division of the three. Um, but still, that is going to be a wild scene if Parrish doesn't start like everyone thought, which I mean, when you set those games last year for the home and home, I mean, you probably expected this coach Novikov probably expected it would not go as well this year. But still seeing it now, uh, it's it's kind of crazy for real. So. Yeah, it is. Again, like we said this on the space, despite the way they they start non-conference, even if somehow they do go 0-5, um, I, I think they're still far and away the best team in D1 Division One. Preston, maybe not far and away. Preston was really good as well. But I still think, despite however Parrish starts the year, I think they're still going to be state favorites um, in Division One. I. I mean, it's just still a, a team that's chock full of talent. We will see that on display here very soon. But – that being said, that concludes our analysis on EHS and Parish, and now we get to go to a game that Walker Lot was at live and in person, and another game that I just got flat wrong: Hyde Park at St. <laughs> Dominic Savio. Yeah, uh, rough day for you, man. Um, it was y'all. You got chirped a lot. Uh, it was awesome. It was a great time, and uh, you know that was my first game in Austin. And uh, David Duplantier, he was uh, he I think he caught like a big, um, big go route on the sideline. He came down the sideline and while I was typing and he said, welcome to Austin. And he, he high five me and I went, all right, this is fun. And so uh, stuff like that. I mean, that it was such a good time. Great. You know, they were great hosts. Thank you so much to uh, St. Dominic Savio for the just it, just the love that I was given over there. So it was awesome to be down there. I wish you the best the rest of the season. Uh, but man, uh, it was a good game. Uh, Savio pretty much kind of controlled most of the part. It was kind of back and forth at the beginning, and then Savio pulled away. And then in the third quarter, Hyde Park had a couple chances. And then um, I think the end of it, I think it was in the fourth, the biggest play of the day was definitely uh, uh, it was they were Hyde Park was going down the field, and um. Uh, they he tried to throw it to Carter Brawl on the sideline. Uh, the uh the Peterson, uh, the quarterback. It's not Jacob Van Ren anymore. Uh, I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know if he ever finished the start of the year. I don't know what happened with that. Um, I, I don't know any connections at Hyde Park. So if someone's listening from Hyde Park, let us know what happened. But Caleb Peterson, the junior quarterback, uh, is now the starter there at um Hyde Park, and uh, he had tried to get on like a fade route to Carter. Um, and, uh, it was picked off by David Duplantier, uh, but they called it out of bounds and it was a big deal and it became a ref show. Um, and it was just an interesting thing. Very, very interesting. And that next play, they try to do an out route to the other side. Jaden Williams catches it, intercepts it, runs it back for like 95 yards. Um, that is the definition of ball don't lie in a football game. Uh, and then it was that moment. Uh, it was, And that kind of sealed the deal for Savio. Uh, kind of talking about the guys. Carter Brawl for Hyde Park is probably the best tight end in private school. His ability to be helping in the pass blocking 
anytime they pulled him and to kind of shut off the any tackle that was coming off the edge, uh, he got pancaked. Uh, it was very impressive. And I don't think he missed a ball unless it was just a bad ball. Um, Carter Brawl might be the best tight end in private school, and I think he deserves a lot of Division One offers coming his way. Um, Brandon Bartholomew was the other kind of key piece for this team. Uh, the running back, the 26 running back was pretty good on the defensive side. Quade Jackson, the 24 DB, uh, he had a big hit in the game, but he was kind of their kind of leader on defense. Um, Hyde Park, I think is good. Um, but I don't think it, you know, last year, uh, you know, that was the team that maybe had a chance to beat regents and then they didn't, I don't think they do it again this year. Um, Savio is probably the second best team in Austin this year. And they proved it that game, uh, Leighton Riviere was great on the day. Uh, he threw some of the just beautiful footballs all day where it needed to be. Um, and p- going through a lot of adversity, not really getting the best snaps here and there. Uh, but he still pulled through and had a great, great game. Uh, Jaden William, Bobby D. Humphreys, and David Duplantier are awesome. And I think that receiving trio make up some of the best in private school this year. Uh, they're awesome. They're great. And they play both ways. And they're explosive. They're athletic. And they're just great, great athletes, man. And they deserve all the college looks they get. Uh, another key player for them, Matthew Cedillo was another good player for them. He's more of a running back linebacker role for them. Uh, but he's a you know other underrated key piece for this team. And then uh another couple guys. Um Robbie Burslam, the six five defensive end for Savio. Uh he he came off the edge multiple times, had a game ceiling sack at the end of it. Um, that was key for the Savio team. So stuff like that. I think they have a couple pieces and I think they'll have a pretty good year again this year. That 24 class uh, for Savio is going to be very impressive and they're going to have a good year. So uh, the question is next year, I don't know, but this year for Savio is going to be pretty dang good. So shout out to those guys. Yeah. I'd like to give a huge shout out to uh, Savio's athletic department for putting a clip of me from last episode saying I can already see into my crystal ball where I picked this game wrong and Leighton Riviere gets to chirp me on Twitter. Well, he chirped me on Instagram, but it was the same thing more or less. But honestly, I, I love that clip. I was working out when I saw that and that clip made me like die laughing in a squat rack in anytime fitness. I like, I look like a maniac, but I was just cracked up. Um, I love that stuff. If, if I ever pick against your team and, and y'all win, please just, plastered on instagram and twitter and tag me it's it's genuinely hilarious to me i i still can't believe that people like actually listen to what we say and just seeing the responses from it is hilarious to me so that's just kind of my spiel on that being said shout out savio um you wouldn't expect an independent team to go out and beat teams from the second highest division in taps, but they're doing that. And I think that's really, really impressive. I'm a huge Leighton Riviere fan and all these guys, the more you scout them, like, like Jaden Williams, Bobby D. Humphreys, David Duplantier, they're great players. Um, I wish them nothing but success. I think they're going to be very, very good this year. But that being said, we can't talk about Savio forever. So we will transition into a Houston versus Dallas matchup where Second Baptist went to play at Prestonwood. Junior Takashi Shaw leads Prestonwood to a win on the ground with 31 rushes for 127 yards and two touchdowns. All these running backs are just getting run to death in the opening weeks. I can't tell you how many stat lines I've seen with 30 plus rushes. It's been a lot. But Tulane commit Kellen Tasby also threw for 200 yards and a touchdown to guess who? Takashi Shaw who accounted for every single one of Preston Wood's points. Takashi Shaw just said, this is my game and completely took it over. Uh, as for second Baptist, Jackson Powers and J.D. Crisp each caught touchdowns from sophomore Cannon Toon, who came in at quarterback in relief of injured Turner Murdoch. So we're we're wishing recovery to Turner Murdoch. Um, but Cannon Toon, like I said before we even started recording, Walker, Cannon Toon's a dog. Um, ever since I saw him take that nasty hit as a freshman and hang on to the touchdown, I've kind of known that Cannon Toon's got that dog in him. But Prestonwood ultimately gets the win against a really, really seasoned um, Second Baptist team under a great coach and Coach Bride. And what are your thoughts on on this Eagle win, or this uh, this Lion win? Yeah, it was a it was a good one, man. That was a good game. I wish I was watching it. Uh, but I, I mean, probably the better team won. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you know, that's a whole different thing. If you know, if uh, Turner Murdoch stays in the whole game, how does that work? Or a lot of ifs. Uh, in this game so it could be interesting to see but I think you know I feel for Turner I mean you know coming back back back-to-back years with injury that's 
you never want that, especially your senior year. So I feel for you guy and I hope the best for your recovery and I hope it's not serious. Um, but uh, Cannon Toon is a great player and he's, you know, under, one of the best underrated or underclassmen in Houston. Uh, and so I think they'll be fine at quarterback, uh, you know, but I think it's going to be interesting. I think this was a good test early in the season for Second Baptist. And now they, you know, go ahead and play Bel Air this week. Uh, Second Baptist, you know, they come back and they'll play uh, Bel Air this week. And so back to back, huge test for the Eagles. But a uh, good win for Preston one, kind of gets their confidence back up after losing to Liberty. Uh, so this is it's good for both teams. Good test for Second Baptist, good win for Preston Wood. So good for both teams. Absolutely. Moving on into a Houston on Houston matchup, St. John's went down to Houston Christians and the high powered Maverick offense keeps on turning as St. John's best Houston Christian 42 to 28 senior quarterback, Stephen Gill throws for 210 yards and four touchdowns, finding junior sensation Cole Allen for two of them and Michael Murphy and Will Hoffrick for one apiece. Cole Allen rounds out his day with four total touchdowns and 255 all purpose yards as he furthers his SPC MVP campaign. I really do think we can see. Um, I'm trying to think of initial suspects for SPC MVP and 4A. It's going to be Cole. It's going to be Carson. Um, Carson. Uh, those are the two main names I can think of. I'm sure we're going to have a few others pop up, but Cole versus Carson is going to be a really, really fun battle for that spot. I'm sure Kincaid will inevitably have somebody pop up, but all that being said, Walker, St. John's beats Houston Christian 42-28. Um, Stephen Gill reached out to us specifically and said Brett Kilker's play, played well. I don't have stats on Houston Christian for the game, but uh, I think... Two, 23 of 33, 251 yards, and then two touchdowns with the 55 yards on the ground. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a great player. Um, what are your thoughts on the ramifications of this game? Yeah, I think, you know, the bigger team won. And I think, you know, Stephen Gill finally got back into it after kind of maybe a rough first game. But, I mean, that's what we expect from Stephen Gill, 210 and four TDs. That's, you know, that's that's the type of caliber of a player he is. Uh, Colon, of course, is a great player. And the receiving core for St. John's is as good as advertised, and they showed it this game. Uh, Houston Christian, I think they take this one uh, and you know, learn from it, and I think they use this experience for you know kind of starting in a couple of weeks uh, their control over uh, uh, SPC 3A. So uh, I think it's going to be interesting to watch, man. I think I would love to see, you know, this is a good win or a good loss for them to kind of see, you know, these are the times of the teams you're going to have to win, overcome to beat a team like TVS in a couple of weeks. You know, absolutely. Yeah. TVS is proving they're going to be a a tall mountain to scale in 3A, but that's why the game's played on the field, and not on paper. So we will cover that matchup when we come to it. Before that, we have our last game to recap Regents at Midland and Regents outlast the Mustangs 42 to 23 behind Quinn Murphy's four touchdowns. Hudson Powell, Blake Smith, and Jack Burkle all have big days receiving as this Regents air attack was very difficult to stop. Stats on this one are limited. However, an all-around performance against a tough opponent this early in the year appears to be a really good sign for the Knights. Um, Walker, I know this game was close for a while. Yeah. And then Regents pulls away late. But it's really, really hard for me to find how this isn't a good win for Regents. Going to Midland, to yeah. a raucous environment. Bus fatigue is always a factor. Yep. And and still, we forget how young Quinn Murphy is, only a, recently a sophomore but he's he's already got a full season of experience under his belt. He's coming into groove. Um, Hudson Powell and Blake Smith are both proving to be very, very good receivers. Jack Burkle, too. I know you got Jacob Willburn on the defense. Long story short, Regents is proving they're going to be a handful in the South. And honestly, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see if we get like a Regents versus Liberty, a Regents versus All Saints for the state championship. We're a long ways from that. Just regarding this game, what are your thoughts on Regents going out West and taking care of Midland? Yeah, I mean it's oh it's impressive. Like anytime you have to go out to Midland, it's it's impressive for any team to go and compete there. Uh, so shout out to uh, Regents, man. That's a that's a big win. I think you know what we talked about it right. Like um, I said, games like this uh, kind of solidify uh, a quarterback and a team. Uh, for Quinn to go out there and do all of this and still put up four touchdowns, that's impressive. I know he had a couple of interceptions on the game, but still to get the win and you know still kind of show out, especially in the second half, that's what you want in a quarterback that young 
in, in that kind of environment. But a big win for Regents, and now it's going to be the measuring stick to how they're going to compete against teams like Liberty and uh, All Saints, where you know it's not always transitive property always works. But it's a good measuring stick to see how they compete versus how those teams compete up in the north. So a uh, big win for Regents. Midland, I think this is a week one. Uh, they did everything they can to kind of compete. And I think this is just a, you know, a better team coming into town. And I don't think this Midland should take anything bad away from this. Uh, I think they, you know, kind of kind of can say, hey, we can compete against the best. Uh, if they, if a couple of things go their way, maybe uh, it can be a good win for them. So uh, Midland, you know, just got to stay confident, got to stay, you know, collected. And I think they could maybe cause some great chaos in district this year. They yeah, have a big, absolutely. they have a big one against Texarkana Pleasant Grove this week. Um, so that's going to be fun to watch, but, um, yeah, good, good. You know, hopefully Midland stays on track still as always. So, yeah, I'm sure they will be just fine. But that being said, that actually concludes our recaps from our five games last week, getting into our other news. We will start as always in the Do They Cover segment. Recapping DC last week, they were 27 and a half point favorites against Wichita Christian. They did not cover. In fact, they did not even win. They lost 17 to 14. So tough beat there. That's the first game I have ever been incorrect on um, in this segment. Um, Very very disappointed in Dallas Christian. I always ride with them to beat the spreads. But like I said, the spreads this early in the season are are wacko. A lot of them don't make sense. Um, yeah, we'll see. Anyways, moving on in or not moving on this week, Dallas Christian are six and a half point favorites against two a powerhouse Tolar. And this is very, very interesting to me. Um, Tolar, Tolar, I don't know. Um, pronounce one of those two ways. Very good. Um, I think state champions or state finalists. I don't remember which last yeah. year in two way. Regardless, they're really, really good. Um, six and a half is a tough line for me to pick. Um, I think Dallas Christian covers. Um, I know Tolar is incredibly good, but the amount of talent that DC has on this team, uh, it's going to be really hard for me not to not to pick them to cover a spread that's less than a touchdown. Give me DC minus six and a half versus Tolar. Walker, your thoughts. Yeah, I'll agree with you. I think I think they cover. Um, uh, I I don't know much about Toller. I went, they opened up a new barbecue joint in that town. Very, it was, it was all right. Um, I went there. It's like an hour hour out of uh Fort Worth. So, um, that's all I know about Toller. Um, and I think they get the cover here. Dallas Christian does. It's kind of an easy pick for us because I mean, regardless if if they win or lose, we're not going to have Toler people chirping us, but we will have DC people chirping us either way if we pick against them. So I think it's pretty safe bet for us there. Anyways, moving on to did Parish cover uh, last week? They were twenty nine and a half point favorites against EHS, and they lost by seven. So they certainly did not cover a seven point spread. That being said, also I forgot to mention this off the top. We don't make these spreads. I had a bunch of EHS kids chirping me after the game. They're like, oh, minus 30, minus 30. What about that spread? We don't make the spreads. The spreads are computer generated by Massey ratings. I think that'd be a little bit shady of us to be making spreads for private school games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would. Anyways, <laughs> um, we're not the ones we're not the ones making these spreads. So you can chirp me if I pick against you. Don't chirp me for the spread line. It's an objective number I'm reading off of a screen. Anyways. This week, Parrish are 23 and a half point favorites against Austin LBJ. Um, I know I just said it's kind of a, a win-win situation when you pick the private school team against the public school team because there's no risk. Uh, I can't in good faith do that here. Um, I, I'm I'm not going to say LBJ wins the game. I don't think Parrish beats them by three touchdowns. Uh, give me LBJ to cover this game. Walker? Yeah, I'm gonna go with you. I don't I don't think Parrish covers. I think LBJ does. Um LBJ uh has always always has had a like a power five guy on that team. I don't know if they do this year. Uh I don't know if Andrew Mubuka's younger brother is still there. Uh the kid who was at uh Clemson, he's they're starting speaking of Clemson, playing against Duke right now. They're only up by one on Duke at half, by the way. That's just Mike Elko, man. Shout out to him. Anyway, football school football school um uh anyways but yeah i think lbj covers this one uh, i i think 
Parrish is going to struggle for the first couple of weeks, and uh, I don't think it slows down here. Yeah, it's a tough schedule, man. Now, oh, imagine it, it's it's the toughest schedule any private school has ever faced. So, yeah, like I said, uh, regardless of what they do, these first five games, they're going to be just fine once they get yeah. in the district. I'm, I'm not that worried about it, but. There you go. We have yes, yes for DC and then no, no for Parrish. So we will see how that turns out. Judging by last week, probably not well, but we will see. Moving on into our first TXPS top 10 power rankings of the season, debuting here in week three. Walk a lot. We finally decided to put these together. The last few weeks, we have not, or the last uh, couple of years, we've waited until district starts to get more information. We decided we can pretty well start doing this now. Um, we're basically, we adjusted the preseason rankings based on teams that have won or that have won or lost and they have come out with these rankings. So without further ado, let us debut them at number one. We have the newly crowned private school champions, Episcopal Bel Air at number two. We have Liberty Christian out of Argyle at number three. We have Parish Episcopal at number four. We have Plano Prestonwood at number five is Houston St. Thomas. Number six is Fort Worth All Saints. Number seven is Austin Regents. Number eight is Mesquite Dallas Christian. Number nine is Houston Second Baptist. And rounding out the top 10 is our first D4 school of the year, Dallas First Baptist. So, Coach LeVorn, remind me, or uh, just whenever you said that you wanted me to pick against you the rest of the year, uh, just to spite you, I put you in our top 10. So, I, I don't know if that's how spite works. But all, being, being serious, uh, First Baptist – kind of putting private school on notice with these first two offensive outputs uh it was our question whether all these athletes were going to gel and if it was going to work and by golly does it work it's elite to watch hunter mccoy is exactly what that offense needed and it is looking fantastic but first baptist isn't the only team in these rankings walk a lot what are your what are your quick bullet point thoughts on our power rankings yeah i think parish is not the first since we've started doing these our second year uh, Parrish goes down to three, which I think is a good spot. I still think we have them as the number one team in D1, which I think is good. Um, EHS and Liberty, I think, have moved up and have competed and played well for the first couple of weeks. And I think EHS takes down the king, they become the king. Uh, I think Liberty has a maybe a way to say they have the crown, uh, but they have to keep winning. And a team like All Saints and other games like that are going to kind of prove it. So uh, EHS has a good one against Second Baptist. Those are number nine in the rankings this week. Um, uh, Fort Bend Christian moves out of the top 10 uh, after two rough weeks to start the season. Uh, they have so much talent. Tennessee commit Bennett Warren, Max Gramble, who's going to be one of the best players in Texas in 25, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They just have to kind of put it together. And, you know, a lot of tr- new guys coming in don't know, don't have all the talent they had at uh, receiver last year. A uh, new quarterback, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back in district. But DC, Second Baptist, both lose. But I, I, we can't move them down. There's no one you can really replace with those guys. I think they they deserve to stay in the top ten. Everything else kind of stays the same. I think it's a good, good top ten. We won't do it every single week. Maybe, maybe we will. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, especially after a crazy week like this one last week, I think it needed to kind of do that. So, yeah, I agree with you. And I think my best advice to to everyone including ourselves is just don't overreact you know weeks one and two and three i'm a broken record i say pretty much everyone looks rusty weeks one and two that's what i've noticed covering games uh the last few years and then once we get into weeks like five six seven that's when you really start to figure out all right these guys are going to contend but the first couple of weeks it's not a big enough sample size to uh to tell what's going to happen you know these are just talking points more or less but also i mean the valid rankings through this point in the season But that being said, that is all we have to talk about regarding our rankings. Moving on to another segment, which is the brainchild of Walker Lott, Texas private school players in college. There's a lot of them now, uh, more than probably we've ever had. And there's a lot of fantastic talent. So, Walker Lott, why don't you you detail for us all the guys that that we have tabs on in college? And uh, there's a lot of stats here. Yeah, no, I, I this is a couple guys who just kind of made an impacts, but some guys really stood out. I was watching, you know, 
as college football has finally returned, thank the Lord. Uh, I sat on my couch and I was I have YouTube TV, so we have the multi view. So we had four games on at once, and I was like, oh, that guy played in private school. Oh, that guy played in private school, and I kind of kept doing that. And I was like, well, why don't we make it a segment? So we'll probably cover like five guys a week if they had really good weeks. Um, but we have a couple guys that I mentioned that uh, um, that I was very impressed with. Looking at uh, looking at the start, we're gonna start with the SMU quarterback. His first game. Uh, starting Preston Stone goes 200, tw- sorry, Preston Stone goes 23 of 37, 248 yards and three TDs to start his opening, uh, his career as the starter at SMU. Good win for him. Uh, I'm excited to see him continue. Sean Holton, the former Nolan Catholic Viking, uh, with, uh, he was at Incarnate Word last year and now he transfers to Texas State and starts there and they were on the upset team of uh, against Baylor this past week. He had four tackles, a game ceiling interception, and also a forced fumble, which that was uh, recovered by former Parrish DB, who was a key player in the game that was on ESPN uh, against Cedar Hill Trinity Christian back in the day, Caleb Kolb, who was also at Incarnate Word, now transferred to Texas State. He got the fumble recovery, so that's awesome to see. Um, the Murphy twins of Bishop Lynch, great Gabriel and Grayson played against uh, in the UCLA Coastal Carolina game to start the year. Never always remember to watch Pac-12 after dark. It's the best part of the part, best part. Last of Saturday. year we'll be able to. Exactly. Uh, Grace, Gabriel Murphy had the better game, three tackles, two tackles for loss and a sack while Grayson had just one tackle. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Dylan Bell is officially starting as wide receiver at Georgia this year, which that's awesome to see. I, I think he at least is three catches, 32 yards um, uh, in this one. And Andrew Paul gets his first uh, playing as a Georgia Bulldog, four carries and 18 yards, which I was kind of reading Twitter and a lot of people love what they saw from him. Um, oh, who else? What else? Uh, Tyler Knopp, the Georgetown quarterback from Fort Worth Christian, 12 of 16, 100 yards and two TDs with 49, uh, 49 yards on the ground and another touchdown. Um, what else? Um, Carson Rogers, our TXP's quarterback retreat uh, helper, had 257 yards and three TDs in their win for te- for Texas Westland. Shout out to him. Uh, he the they play at the new Crowley ISD Stadium in Fort Worth, which I uh, heard is very very nice. Uh, so that's a good that's a good stadium for them. Uh, a couple other guys, Nana Osafano Menza, the Notre Dame defensive end, had a tackle. Caleb Mathis on special teams gets his first tackle of the game. Um, and also shout out my guy from Fort, South, Fort Worth Southwest Christian, Tyson Flowers, gets two tackles in the, the Rice's game against Texas and Tech and Austin. Uh, he looked good out there, man. And he's you know he's a starter on some third down packages, and I think he got banged up this past uh, in the game. So hopefully his recovery is pretty easy. But I have to shout out my guy, man. That was good to see him out there. But um, if anyone sees any of their alumni playing well in college, send them our way and we'll try to recognize them, but um, probably do around five a week, but we wanted to recognize since it's the opening uh, TXPS in college segment. So shout out to all those guys. Absolutely. Just a ton of fantastic talent in private school that we are displaying right here can go on and make an impact in, in big, big uh, collegiate football games. So it's always fun to see. Last thing I will hit in our other news segment, um, you know, our good friend, No Context, put something on Twitter. Uh, he quote tweeted a Grant Turner, uh, the athlete from Grace, who is fantastic, by the way, one of the more underrated athletes in the state. That dude is electric. But he quote tweeted, he quote tweeted a, um, a, a Grant Turner little highlight clip from this past game. And it was something along the lines of pray for Coram Deo's defensive backs. Now, granted, No Context probably could have used some some better language and not not directly said the name of a school but apparently Coram Deo has shooters apparently Coram Deo has burner accounts that I I couldn't tell if they were new or um or if they were established burners but Coram Deo they they chirped uh no context and they told him to get a job which I I don't really uh, maybe I'm I'm old and I don't really understand the reference, but all that being said, uh, no context. Just responded um, to the burners with screenshots after last year's game where I picked them to beat Legacy Christian in my bet with Ryan. He just said, "Remember the good times, Coram Deo." I, I have no I have no beef with you. I I consider y'all like a second son to me. Um, I will always root for Coram Deo as long as they're not playing Grace Community, and. 
I just think that that Grant Turner is going to score five touchdowns on your head. Anyways, that uh, is all I'm going to comment on that. And it on. also is uh, the count is 100 percent owned and run by Walker Lott, supposedly uh, that that report is false, by the way. Uh, I take it up with him. I mean, he's I, the, I guess he's I'll have tweeting to. that. He did also say I'll, I've said a lot of things about Deion Sanders, but in my lifetime, but my God is Colorado electric factory. And I can't disagree. Shut up. No context here. Real one. Yeah. It, it's ridiculous. You did repost that. That made, that made no context happy. I think it's the first time any, I think it's the first time any of the <laughs> official podcast members have retweeted a no context tweet, but that he felt like he made it when that happened. I think uh, that's what, that's what I think <laughs> I heard from him. Anyways, that's all we're going to talk about. No context. And before we get into our five games of the week, we have to talk to you about high point signs and apparel. Um, like we're we've said before, high point are the guys that we've we've built our merch through. I mm-hmm. can't say enough good things about them. Everything that we've made with them has come out fantastic, and they're just so daggum easy to work with. It's the most professional apparel group that we've worked with. Listen, they don't miss deadlines, they provide exceptional customer service, they will meet or beat any price. Good luck finding a better deal than that anywhere else. And they also create online stores that can provide your employees with apparel or they can be profit centers. Like we've said before, the site that we launched to sell our apparel, we did it through High Point and it's the easiest thing ever. Um, I promise you it's the best decision you'll ever make if you want to get your own apparel done. They're exceptional. They're very, very professional. Walk a lot. Uh, tell them about High Point. Yeah, it's been awesome to work with them. They've been exceptional. And uh, it's not just that. They do signs as well. So also reach out to that. They are actually doing, uh, I saw uh, our guy out there um, outside of, they're doing the new uh, practice field for Texas A&M. They're doing all the signs for that. So I saw them outside doing that a couple of weeks ago, driving back from class. So uh, they also do signs as well. So if you have any signage you need at your high school or at home or anything, reach out to them because they can definitely help you out with that. But um, they've been awesome, some of the best to work with. And so they've been helping us out with the TXPS store, and they will continue to help us out with other drops down the road. Uh, Please, if you need anything for signage for your school, shirts, uh, apparel, you know, when playoffs come around, you want to get a playoff shirt, go reach out to them. They're they're awesome. But they work with Texas A&M, and, you know, they're one of the best colleges in the country, of course. And so if they work with them, you should work with them. So please reach out to High Point Signs and Apparel. That's a heck of an endorsement. We will have links to High Point's website in our show notes. So please go go to their website, uh, book with them. They are fantastic. Shout out to High Point Signs and Apparel for sponsoring this episode. But Walker, that being said, uh, our five games of the week where we will debut five of this week's picks, starting off with Fort Bend Christian Academy versus Houston St. John's. St. John's is a five and a half point favorite. And another cross-conference matchup will take place this Friday as Fort Bend will make the short drive to St. John's to take on the Mavericks. Listen, Fort Bend struggled in non-conference with losses to Iowa Colony and a recent 31-0 loss to UIL 5A Randall. The Eagles' offense has struggled to get anything going on the young season. The top-end talent is certainly there with Tennessee commit Bennett Warren and Power 5 target Max Granville, but Fort Bend needs to see their role players step up in a Big way to get a win here. St. John's, on the other hand, under Kevin Veltri has been electric. One and one coming into this contest. They're averaging 46 points a game behind standout Stephen Gill and Cole Allen. Adding guys like Michael Murphy and Will Hoffrecht, and you have some serious firepower that the Eagles have to contend with. Fort Bend are the reigning state champions, and I have no doubt that they'll improve this season. However, at this point, I don't know if they can contain this high-powered Mavericks offense. I'm going to take St. John's in this one. Walker? Yeah, that's a that's a really good pick, man. I think also I'm going to go St. John's in this one. I think it's going to be um, uh, St. John's won last year uh, with a better Fort Bend team. Um, and now this is a lesser Fort Bend team. And St. John's just gets, you know, everyone that was really good last year, just one year older. Um, you know, I could talk about maybe the defensive line for Fort Bend might have caused some havoc. Um, but I think last year they really didn't. And so I don't know how I can say they're going to do it again this year. So uh, Max Granville, D- Ducksworth and company are going to have to have a great game on the defensive line to kind of uh, put um, Gil uncomfortable in this game to maybe have a chance. But um, 
if Gil's comfortable and is able to throw to the weapons that he has, this might get ugly. So, but give me St. John's in this one. Yeah, and keep in mind that you know Fort Bend, if you remember, started slow last year and then went on to win a state championship. Fort Worth yeah. All Saints started slow last year and went on to make play a state. In the state championship game. Yeah, again, don't overreact these first couple of weeks. Yeah, Fort Bend looks bad right now. There's no, there's no sugarcoating that. Um, I, I think as the as the weeks go on, you could see the tide start to change, but. You never know. You just have to get to those games to see. Moving on into Faith versus Episcopal School of Dallas. A DFW affair will take place on Friday as 2-0 Grapevine Faith will travel to Episcopal School of Dallas to take on the Eagles. ESD is coming off a 31-0 shellacking at the hands of Liberty Christian, who does make the case for the best team in the state. The perennial SPC contenders are led by junior transfer quarterback Jake Jerky. Jerky will have athletes Nick Wheeler and Hutch Chipman at his disposal, and Colin Nicholson by himself is a force to be reckoned with. Looking at Faith, the Lions are a vastly different team from last season, with first-year head coach Bobby Holland following many losses to graduation and the transfer portal. However, one constant for Faith is Air Force commit Clayton Sebecki. The junior athlete is being utilized at quarterback this year, and his dual threat ability will put all of D2 on notice this season. I think Faith is going to be much better than anticipated this season, and they displayed that with a huge win against a solid Woodlands Christian Academy squad. However, I think ESD has a much stronger front than what Faith has seen thus far and will prove a more difficult task than Brook Hill in the Woodlands Christian Academy. Give me ESD in a close one. It's not going to be 20 and a half points, but I think ESD edges them here. Walker? Ooh, this is a good one. This is going to be an interesting one. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll play devil's advocate with you and I'll go, I'll go great find faith in this one. I, um, the Sebeki show is something just so spectacular to watch. And he is just dominating this year. Um, wearing number two, like Manziel, he's doing whatever he can out there to just get wins and, uh, guys like big Wa- Ben Wagoner to help him out too. is going to be a key piece, um, of this team. Uh, he had a great game last year, uh, last week, 300 yards receiving with two touchdowns. Um, so stuff like that, guys like that, you know, as long as they have these dudes, they have a chance. Um, yeah, I I just I for some reason I just have a feeling Clayton Sebecki is gonna look them in the eye and say, I got this, and just you know, carry them to victory with Ben Wagoner being the guy that Sebecki will throw to. Um give me uh Grapevine Faith, but I think it is gonna be a good one too. I'm excited to see Jake Jerky. He, he he's an interesting cat because he came in and you know had a good week one, but they struggled, of course, against all states of week two. How does he bounce back with this uh, this ESD squad? I mean, I'm intrigued. Imagine an alternate universe where Raybuck stays at faith and you have a Sebeki Raybuck backfield of Sebeki and Raybuck running a read option. Imagine that. Yeah, I, I'm scared that faith wins this game and they're going to come out and, and be the best team in D2. And I, I really want grace to be that this year. So I'm, I'm a little bit biased uh, in rooting for ESD in this one, but we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Nonetheless, moving on to our third game to preview the Woodlands Christian Academy versus St. Pius TWCA is an eight and a half point favorite in this game. The Woodlands Christian Academy will travel south into Houston to take on the Panthers of St. Pius in another D1 versus D2 battle in the early season. TWCA comes into the contest 1-1, one one, coming off a tough loss where they gave up 63 points to the previously mentioned Grapevine Faith Lions. Even with the loss, TWCA looks to be an improved squad this year behind contributions from standout wide receiver Kai Parker, linebacker Grayson Boker, defensive lineman Gunnar Oakland, and quarterback Jonathan Fidal. The traditional D1 power SPX has had some tough sledding recently, dropping their first two to Second Baptist and Kelly Catholic. However, with talent like Nathan Alvarez, Chase Stepp, and KJ Dribble, the Panthers are going to compete in most of the games they play in. However, in this one, I'm going to have to lean to WCA. Even if Kai Parker is out, like we mentioned at the top of the episode, I'm very high on this year's Warrior Squad, and I think they get it done here in this one. Walker? Uh, Interesting. Sorry, I'm watching this Duke game, and Duke just blocked a field goal by Clemson. Oh Mike Elko better earn a better job than Duke one day. Mike Elko's a fantastic coach. Anyways, back to this. Uh, Give me TWCA. 
Um, TWC, I think, bounces back from this, uh, this you know, Grapevine Faith loss. And I think all those guys kind of get healthy maybe um, with Grayson Boker, who I think is a stud. Um, and Jonathan Vidal, who had a great week one. And Gunnar Auckland probably will, you know, have a really good game. Uh, Bo Ellis and a company. I think this team is going to bounce back really well. Give me uh, TWCA. Moving on into the second to last game, we will preview this week Episcopal versus Second Baptist, of which there is no spread. But oh man, what an H Town matchup do we have here. Episcopal coming off an upset of the best private school in the state, and Second Baptist in tight contention with another D1 powerhouse. You know the names for EHS UNLV commit Carson Gordon and Yale commit Braylon Thompson lead a ridiculously talented night squad. And with contributions from Garen Sampson, Logan Barty, Madden Morgan, and Brandon Thomas, the Knights aren't coming, they're here. Second Baptist is no pushover, though. Sophomore standout Cannon Toon takes over at quarterback, and with J.D. Chris, Jackson Powers, and Charlie Shears making plays, the Eagles are one of the favorites in Division II. But after last week, how can you not take EHS? To be the best, you have to beat the best, and the Knights did just that. Give me EHS here. Yeah, uh, that was very well said, and I can't can't argue with that logic, so give me Bel Air here. Um I think Second Baptist is going to put up a fight. I I really like the Second Baptist team, and I think you know they drove all the way up to DFW and played a close one with Prestonwood, and I think they just drive. Uh, is it at EHS or is it at Second Baptist? I think it's, it's at, at Second. Okay, then maybe at home. You know they have a good atmosphere there at Second Baptist. Things could kind of go crazy, but give me uh, give me Bel Air. I think Carson Gordon is going for, you know, our large school player of the year this year. I think he's coming for it, man. I think he's having a sensational year. Dan Casey at offensive coordinator is dialing up this team to the best of his ability. And I just don't know how you don't, you know, pick this team, but second Baptist man, they've always been really good. And I think they are good this year. Just not exactly uh, maybe not this week. So give me second Baptist or give me Bel Air Episcopal. There we go. Yeah, EHS is just fantastic this year. But I'm going to waste no time getting into probably the most excited I'm going to be to preview a game this entire year. That is Grace Community School at Bullard Brook Hill. Grace is a one and a half point favorite. And boy, is that fitting. A tale as old as time. I would say good versus evil, but that might come across a little bit biased. To quote Brendan Urie, Grace has high, high hopes for the 2023 season. Coming off whoopings of Winona and Wills Point, Grace is touting an offensive machine. And commanding the motor is sophomore quarterback Zach Davis. Davis has looked poised and ready to fire into this matchup, and standouts Grant Turner, JT Williams, and Luke Wilson will round out this offense. Defensively, the Cougars make their money behind an elite linebacking core of Blake Harmon and Dylan Taylor, who have the opportunity to join the ranks of Alex Quintero, Smith Pruitt, and Josh Spitzer, Andrew Cotton as the best duos in the school's history. Looking at the guard, another standout quarterback, Jonah McCowan, is coming off a 62-point performance against UIL 3A Life Oak Cliff, and with Xavier Kendrick and Colton Richards back, the guard will be playing with some fire in their bellies against hated rivals, Grace Community. Look, I went nine and one against Tyler Schools in my career. Mm. That one loss came my senior year at Brook Hill, and that's eaten at me a little more than I'd like to admit. I can tell you better than anyone that these teams do not like each other, and you're going to be hard pressed to find a better rivalry hidden away in the piney woods of East Texas. And even though I'm wearing the Grace Polo, and those are forever going to be my guys, I'm going to pick Grace Community. If you thought for half a second I'm picking Brook Hill in this game, you have something seriously, seriously wrong with you. Um, I ride or die with Grace Community. I have been the biggest proponent, even when they were bad. Grace Community wins this game. They avenge my death in 2018 and that monsoon that we would have absolutely won if it was not raining cats and dogs. Give me Grace Community. Give me all the points. Give me Zach Davis. Give me JT Williams. Give me every single person. Grace Community wins this game. Walk a lot. That was that was probably your best like intro in a very long time. Very, very good job. Um, Thank you. 
That was amazing. Uh, that got me juiced. Oh god. <laughs> Texas high school football is just the best. Um uh I'll go with you. We have high hopes for uh I'm I'm not gonna do it like last year where uh, <laughs> we had that you know fake fun rivalry we had for a week. Um uh I think Tyler Grace looks really good this year. They had a couple good wins uh first two weeks, and I think they're gonna have a good one this one. Uh but um uh, I think it was a good game last year. It was pretty close, I believe, last year. And I think it's going to be a fun one this year again. I think Jonah McCown and company are going to put up a fight. But give me the edge to Tyler Grace in this one. And I'm saying Tyler Grace just to kind of make him make uh, Wes a little irked. I have to irk him a little bit. So shout out to Tyler Grace. Uh, I think they get the win here. Uh, I'm just for all the Dallas and Houston and San Antonio people, mostly the Dallas people, because they're like, oh, that's how we differentiate you from Arlington Grace. You don't call them Arlington Grace. They're Grace Prep. We're Grace Community. You you don't have to differentiate it by cities. No one in Tyler calls it Tyler Grace. It's Grace Community. And if you're if you're going to confuse Grace versus Grace, Grace Community, Grace Prep, two, two very different things. It's just mm-hmm. it's not Tyler Grace. I will get off my soapbox. But that being said, um, oh, yeah, I'm going to be at that game if I didn't make it clear. Um, I wouldn't miss that game for the world. I will drive a four-hour round trip without even thinking to go cover that game. Um, even people people forget I went to Brook Hill for like six years. So I'll be back in familiar territory in Bullard um, in God's country, East Texas. So I'm very excited for that. That being said, Walker Lot, that is all that we have for this episode. It's going to be another fantastic week in private school football. Is there anything that you want to leave the people with before we sign off? Um, to respond back to that thing, I I didn't I never liked when people called it Fort Worth, Fort Worth Southwest. I hated that. I never get I never got it. I I we always are Southwest Christian. That's like always what we were. Um, we were always SES. I always hated F like. Uh, like FWSC, SES, like it doesn't, uh, yeah, I hate it. Um, uh, yeah, anyways, um, I will probably be at Lutheran South at Cypress Christian this week. Um, that's a game that I'm intrigued, and if not there, it will be Bel Air at Second Baptist, one of the two. Um, but I think I'm going to be seeing Second Baptist, you know, I think the next week, and uh, whatever Bel Air Episcopal we just saw. So we're trying to, you know, branch out a little bit, but uh, Lutheran South looks like a pretty good squad. Uh, they have a couple guys that I'm intrigued to go watch. Cypress Christian led by John Kelly and company. Uh, it's going to be a fun one at their place. So it shouldn't be that far of a drive either for me. So I'll be good too, but um, good week. I'm excited for this one. We have a rivalry, a big time rivalry in Tyler uh, Grace community versus uh, Buller Brook Hill. Yes, you're welcome. I did it right. Um, and a couple we other games. Tyler Grace community. Well, Fort Worth Southwest Christian is, yeah, See, I get it. But, yeah, but yeah, I get it. But, I get no, it. I, and I will say, hand hand up. Um, on I think the second to last ever nine three Vegas episode that I did, um, that was the podcast I did before, um, TXPS. Um, I was previewing the. I was previewing the playoff bracket and I probably said the words Fort Worth Southwest Christian a hundred times. So yeah. I, I, I go on this big rant about calling them by cities, but in, in reality, I'm a hypocrite. I do the same thing. So I can't really take myself too seriously. If there's any team in the comments that hate how we say their name, let us know. Like, I, I wonder if like regents, do they go Regents school of Austin? Cause that's te- the technical name or that did they hate everyone that calls us Austin regents? Like stuff like that. I wonder if that, um, it's a good point. It's a good point. Just let me know if there's any team that we we mispronounce their names. But uh, good week. I'm excited. It should be a good one. Uh, Wes will be at a rivalry. I should be down in Cyprus. Uh, let's ride. If you haven't, please go check out our TXPS Media merch. It is the, it is called the debut because it is the debut of our apparel line, the debut of TXPS Media, and uh, a lot of things. A lot of people love it. It looks really sick. Uh, shout out TXPS Media. Shout out us. We should be. Um, we just met with our interns. We should have around 10 of them to help us out this year. So, uh, feel free to, uh, whenever you see them on our timeline, go follow them and we should have a lot more, uh, you know, uh, content coming to our, uh, website. So feel free to check out our website. We should have more articles a week than we've ever had and other stuff. We should be able to go cover more games, uh, with these people, uh, helping us out. And we're really, really thankful uh, that they're wanting to help us uh, grow while we can help them grow in their sports journalism, um, uh, you know, experience. So uh, special thanks to all those people. Shout out to those guys. And yeah, uh, let's start a great 
another great week of Texas High School football. Absolutely. I couldn't say it better myself. So with all that being said, I have been one half of your hosting crew, West Hollis, and Walker Lott has exceptionally been himself. We will see you in the next episode. See you later. Three, two, one.